without genuine empowerment a joseph ministry of economic influence and leadership without empowerment how can i rise as an esther without empowerment apostle but i think people like you when did they start liking me can i tell you this when god is silent learn to hear the voice of silence i'm praying tonight everything you have been carrying this is the month to give birth to it your weak beginning will experience dimensions of favor you have never experienced to the king this is saying thank you for your mercies this is saying thank you for your goodness this is saying thank you for your faithfulness thank you merciful God thank you miraculous God thank you the all wise God thank you the keeper of Israel thank you is someone blessing his name thank you thank you the helper of men thank you the lifter of men Jesus we bless you we have come as grateful people tonight Acknowledging your faithfulness, acknowledging your mercies. We give you all the praise. We give you all the praise. We give you all the praise. Someone thank him for your life. Thank him for this ministry. We bless you. I want you to reflect for one minute on the faithfulness of God in your life. Sometimes we take for granted the mercies and the faithfulness of God. God has been good to me. God has been good to you. God has been good to this ministry. I want you to find a way that only you can express in the next one minute. I leave you with your maker. Tell him thank you. Thank you. Some of you will want to sing it some of you will want to cry it some of you will want to chant it but by all means tell him thank you thank you wherever i be if you left me where would i be where would i be if you left me where would i be if you left me? Yeah, that's
bless you. I thank you for my life. You have been faithful. It is in you and because of you that we live, we move and even have our being. For a man can receive nothing except and unless it is given unto him of the Lord. All that we have is because you gave to us. Thank you. Merciful God, thank you. Now ask him to give you a very definite encounter by his spirit tonight. Pray from the depth of your heart an encounter that will set my life on fire, an encounter that imparts the wisdom of the spirit upon my life, an encounter that measures for me a thousand more cubits in destiny, an encounter that heals, an encounter that restores, an encounter that empowers even by the spirit holy holy blessed is he who comes in the name of our God Blessed is he who comes in the name of God. Hosanna. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna. Hosanna. tonight with wisdom come to us tonight with power come to us tonight with grace come to us tonight with direction let Jesus be revealed in and through our lives and we vow to give God the glory for the many things he has done the things he is doing and the many he will yet do even tonight to you be all the glory for in Jesus matchless name we pray for in Jesus matchless name we pray amen and amen God bless you please be seated 
Hallelujah. I welcome you to the presence of God and to church tonight. This is Koinonia. And the Lord is determined to do you good tonight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me start very quickly. We have a lot to do tonight. I want to take this time to deeply and profoundly appreciate everyone, especially our global family. As you know, many of you, um, you know that God has been so merciful, so merciful to this ministry. It's been 12 years since Koinonia started. <laughs> Hallelujah. 12 years. So that you do not take it for granted, that is how old a young boy was when he died. In the Bible, the centurion's son was 12 years old. That was how old or how long the woman with the issue of blood had to go through that pain. 12 years old, anything is long enough to give God glory for. And so we thank him for his mercies. God has been faithful, but like I will always say, this is only a step to many heights. And so I want to really take the time to say thank you. The Bible says the Lord gave the word great was the company of them that published it hallelujah praise the name of the lord god has been faithful i really want to thank everyone who has given everyone who has sown a global family for all that you have done you would hear me say it and i would repeat it again it's one thing to be called of god no matter how genuine your call and your mandate is every call thrives when you have faithful people who believe in Jesus and believe in you and are willing to invest their lives, their time, their resources into this vision, and any wise and thoughtful leader must take advantage of days like this to say thank you. So on behalf of Jesus, who is the truest and the surest apostle of this commission, I say thank you to everyone, and that includes you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. My commitment is to remain ever faithful to that which God has given and it should be a moment of renewed commitment to everyone that I would give my all to Jesus. Remember I have taught you that in this ministry it is not about celebration of fans. No, you have to erode away that fan mentality and plunge in by revelation and by covenant. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The second, very quickly, like I promised last week, is um, just to add to um, the preparation for a UK conference. Unfortunately, I'm not able to make the announcement I promised to make today because um, we're still trying to tidy up a few logistics. And for that, I sincerely apologize. Um, it's been a phenomenal journey already. You wouldn't believe that we have as at the last time I got the statistics, there's over 2,700 workforce already, just the workforce, not even, you can imagine, 2,700 people already ready, so you can imagine, if that is the workforce alone, so um, it is a grace that God has given us and we're happy for it, and so we're really trying to make plans um, to see that it is very effective to all who have um, participated in being part of the workforce you will be duly communicated this week but um, my apologies please just allow me the privilege of one more week and then we'll bring a standard announcement that includes the date the venue and every other logistic we're working with our people there to make sure that we come up with a time frame that does not clash. There are a number of major activities that will be happening in the United Kingdom. Among them, the official coronation of the King, King Charles. So we want to make sure those activities are usually week long and it almost shuts down every other thing. So we are working in wisdom to make sure that all is set 
Uh, and then my apologies again for people we've received, I've personally received without exaggeration, probably hundreds of text messages from people who want to give towards the conference. For now, the only platform we've given out there is the PayPal platform, and that's because um, we're tidying up logistics to have our account open there, you know, sometimes the processes will take a while, and so we're patiently just waiting. My sincere apologies for those in Nigeria, you can make payments to our Naira account or any of our domiciliary account. We have our accounts in Euro, in um, dollars, in um, beautiful, thank you. So we have it there in pounds. So you can do well to just send. If you cannot wait, you can send your seed there. And either way, it's just indicate. You can just write UK conference or UK apostolic conference. We'll have a way of um, sorting it out. Um, for those who can make do with the PayPal, I'm sorry that you have to just make do with it. But we hope that by next week, when we're making the official announcement, that would be sorted. And thank you very much for those of you who have been patient. You cannot imagine how many people have been calling to ask, look, what can I do? Can we have... Um, this is one of the ways that you will know God sent you. He never leaves you alone. He said, when I sent thee, lackest thou anything. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And so let me appreciate all our UK family and several people already... The pressure has been to make the announcement, especially for those we have people already coming from literally across the globe and um, so that they can tidy up their flight bookings and other logistics. And there are many people who are also coming from here, aside from the team that is going. So um, my sincere apologies. Please allow me this week again. And then once we get a standard feedback from our team there, will be ready to make the official announcement. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I had a vision yesterday night into this morning. Let me just um, share that so we pray before we get to the word. And most times, I, I told you that influence is a very delicate commodity, and you must be very careful what you do with influence. You can destroy a people by mismanaging influence. And so I know the implication of statements and what I say here. Anything you say on elevated platforms like this are things that go global. So it's always wise to not only be truthful but to be discerning but i want us to pray um i don't know what it is but i was just kneeling quietly not even praying meditating when this vision was opened up to me and in the vision i saw 17th 17th of march that will be friday and i just saw a danger light blinking on it and i just had the word pray and that was it. I'm saying it because, and not because I have to say it. As I sat back there, the Holy Spirit kept impressing in my heart that we pray corporately. Um, now, this is not to plant fear, not at all, but um, when God creates that prompting, it is for us to pray. Hallelujah. I saw that date 17. That is Friday now. That should be, I think that should be Friday. Yes. And I saw... You know, like an amber light, danger light. And that was what I saw. And I had the word pray. So wherever you are, if you can hold hands with someone to your left and right. And i like us to pray in the spirit. You don't have to stand. You can sit. Just to honor this vision that God has shown. And for all those who are connecting from across the globe, there's no reason for fear. i like us to pray. Pray for Nigeria. Pray for that date, Friday. In the name of Jesus, we declare we are ambassadors. We have been mandated by heaven to ensure and to insist that the counsel of the Lord stands. We have been mandated to avert every manifestation of danger and bloodshed. 
Someone is praying. We are connecting as a family of faith. Seventeenth of March, Friday, we bring you under the influence of the blood. We bring you under the covering of the blood. Everything, every orchestration going on in the realm of the spirit, whether political or economic, whether it's a security situation, we declare by the spirit of the living God, the cry of the saints ascend to the heavens, and we declare that the mighty hand of God is outstretched on this wise. Preserve your people for the sake of the elect. Preserve your people for the sake of the saints. You have given us the eyes that see and the ears that hear so that the saints and even your purposes are preserved. I declare by the Spirit of God from the north to the south, the east and the west of this nation, we command supernatural protection, every conspiracy of darkness, every fraternity of wicked men with demonic forces, to kill, to steal, to destroy. We come against it right now in the name of Jesus. The spirit of bloodshed. We come against it right now in the name of Jesus. The spirit of violence. We come against it in the name of Jesus. Declare a prayer cover over your loved ones. Declare a prayer cover over your children. Declare a prayer cover over everything concerning you. We pray for the military. We pray for INEC, we pray for all that will be happening from Friday and even Saturday, the gubernatorial elections, State House of Assemblies and all of the activities that will be happening. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, the Lord himself will preserve his name. For in Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. The purpose of revelation is to bring about redemption. When God shows a thing, it is not just a proof of spiritual status. It is that we have the power in Christ, in partnership with the Holy Spirit, to allow or to disallow. Are we together? Hallelujah. We declare peace over our nation in the name of Jesus. And again we declare and we insist that only the counsel of the Lord at all levels of government will stand in this nation. We declare that every plot of vote buying, manipulation, threatening of God's people and of the citizens and any kind of electoral malpractice may God disappoint the devices of the crafty. In Jesus' name. And for our gubernatorial elections, we lend our voice as not only spiritual citizens, but responsible citizens to pray that in the name of Jesus, God will elect for himself and by himself leaders who truly love this nation. Leaders who love the nation and its advancement beyond their personal pocket. Leaders who love this nation beyond sentiments. May that be so in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. All right, so now we go to the message. Thank you very much. This is what it means to be a spiritual people. Habakkuk said, I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower that I will see what the Lord will say unto me. God puts us in these positions so that by the privilege of the eyes he has given to see and the ears he has given to hear, that we are able to guide not only the body of Christ, a true apostolic ministry is not for church members. A true apostolic ministry is to help territories not only find God, but find the path to a destiny that makes for advancement, for growth. Are we together? Yes. A true, genuine apostolic and prophetic ministry is not limited to a church congregation. That means your value extends beyond the church wall. 
people do not have to be of your faith or of your congregation to profit from you when Jesus walked upon the earth who is our model the apostolic model his ministry transcended culture race gender is that true he ministered to people at several levels at a socio-economic level at a political level at a sociological level more importantly at a spiritual level and so we have come to points where our value must not only be spiritual it must be primarily spiritual but we must be such a blessing that everyone wants to listen to you not because you are a man of God but because you have become a consistent contributor even to nation building this is what we advocate not just fanatism to draw people across a faith thought or a faith process our value must transcend church and religion someone who is a non-christian should be able to listen to any message even this message and find value that improves their life they should be better because they listened to someone even if not as a child of god but as one from a standpoint of leadership and transformation hallelujah praise the name of the lord are you blessed tonight so um tonight i want you to pay very close attention to the teaching we have a lot to do and um god himself is going to be speaking to us in a way that will bless us in a way that will build us i am passionate about the growth of the saints i'm passionate about a holistic growth and development and this is one of such messages that i believe will help us um, I want to share with us and to examine tonight the, the doctrinal pillars, just to honor what God has done in this ministry so far, the doctrinal pillars that make up this vision, the doctrinal pillars that make up what you call this commission. It is important for us to understand um, the doctrinal basis for who we are what we teach why we teach what we teach and this is not only just for koinonia captured in this message tonight tonight's message doubles as a a transformation conference a pastor's conference there are so many things you're going to be learning tonight and i pray that god give us a heart that understands hallelujah so i title my discourse tonight in a teaching called this is the message this is the message first john 1 and verse 5 that's where i coined out the title for tonight it says this then is the message which we have heard of him and declared unto you this is the message and it says we heard it of him and then we have now declared it unto you this is the message we have heard of him and declare it unto you hallelujah now for introduction i want you to take note of this that what makes men powerful in this kingdom as leaders especially in the ministry one of the foundational reasons for the greatness of men in this kingdom is the message that is given to them listen carefully the value of a man of God the value of a ministry the value of any spiritual platform among many others is measured in the kind and the quality of the message that has been given to them and how intentional they are in dispensing that message in this kingdom what gives power to men is the message above and beyond the person hallelujah praise the name of the lord i wrote down here and i wanted to listen and then write every attack every spiritual attack on a man of god on a ministry or on any vision is ultimately an attempt to silence the message every spiritual attack on a man of god on a ministry or on a vision is ultimately intended to silence the message 
this is what satan is about when satan attacks people he does not just attack them for themselves he attacks them so that he brings them to a point where their message is not heard watch this now the attack of satan with respect to ministries or men of god is twofold number one the first attack is on the character of the individual why is the character very important because the character is what gives credence and believability to your message are we together before people believe what you are saying they want to believe in you so when the devil attacks your character look up please when the devil attacks your character what he ultimately seeks to do is to bring you to a point where you are not of credence before the people and therefore whatever comes out of you they do not pay attention to it so the first attack of satan is usually the character of the man of god and when he goes that route the second route is the quality of the message these two things the character of the man of god and the message but ultimately the attempt is to silence the message let's look at two scriptures to buttress on that point very quickly acts chapter 4 and verse 15. this was after the man at gate beautiful had been healed we're reading to 18 very quickly then we'll go to verse 5. it says but when they had commanded when peter now was called into the council they had commanded them to go aside out of the council. They conferred among themselves, uh -huh, saying, What shall we do to this man? For indeed a notable miracle had been done by them. is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. 17, watch this now. But that it spread no further among the people. Let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth no more to no man in this name so the problem was their speaking there was something about their message and the power and the transformation it was producing verse 18 and they called them and commanded them not to speak at all or teach in the name of jesus that was the warning that was all satan was about now let's go to chapter 5 and begin our reading from verse 27 5 and 27 5 and 27 not 19 27 yes 5 27 and when they had brought them one more time they appear before the jerusalem council and set them before the council the high priest asked them 28 saying did we not straightly command you that you should not teach in this name and behold ye have filled jerusalem with your doctrine other versions will say with your message and intend to bring this man's blood upon our heads the message is powerful because among many things that the message does is to give the people a new orientation it structures their understanding to begin to see god and to see life from a more superior standpoint and these guys were threatened by the message someone said the message now let me let me just share with you something very powerful before i go to the meat of our discussion i wrote down here and if you are in ministry here particularly the fivefold ministry i want you to please pay attention this is a two or five minutes powerful crash course as far as excelling in ministry is concerned listen very carefully every ministry i wrote down here every calling and every commission from God that must find expression must have these five essentials. So that every ministry, every calling, and every commission that is from God and seeks to find expression must have these five essentials. If God has called you or you claim God has called you, if these five essentials are not at work in your life and your commission, I guarantee you your ministry and your vision will never find the light of day. This is not only true for ministry, it is true for any kind of organization. Are we together? Let me run through the list. Ready? Number one, every ministry, every calling, and every commission must have, number one, the message or the mandate. 
this is the first essential for any ministry to succeed you must understand your mandate or your message you can preach many messages you can preach many series but it is important that you understand the message that which is a holistic capture that represents your contribution as far as the mandate of God to you is concerned the message in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 17 we see this classically revealed in the life of Jesus himself from that time the Bible says Jesus began to preach and to say repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand there was no confusion there was no ambiguity as to the message of Jesus you could distinguish the ministry of Jesus as against that of John, as against that of any other prophet. There was clarity and exactitude to his message. John chapter 10 and verse 10, still making reference to Jesus to buttress this point. Jesus was speaking and he said, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. He said, But I am come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly are we together in matthew chapter 10 i believe from verse 7 he was commissioning the apostles the disciples now and he made before he started talking about signs and wonders he said as ye go preach saying there was an exact content to the message he didn't say as ye go well just say whatever you want to say as ye go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand meaning within your reach and then verse 8 demonstrates the validity of that kingdom by healing the sick cleansing the lepers raising the dead casting out devils giving freely but the message is in verse 7 the kingdom of heaven is at hand so every ministry that must find expression every organization must have their mandate and their message clearly spelled please look up now i teach especially in ministers conferences when i charge ministers especially on this point i tell them that god has called different ministers to do several things it is the mandate and the assignment of every man of god to insist that the subject matter that relates to the area of call and mandate becomes one of the truths that are most surely believed among the people is that true let me give you an instance if you go to canaan land to our father in the gospel bishop Oedipo, there are many things that you hear people know but a typical dedicated covenant winner when you speak to them as touching the matters of faith they live they breathe faith because in one word the theme of that commission is faith are we together yes respectfully speaking if you go to say mountain of fire and miracle ministries you know you step from the gate you will start praying <laughs> hallelujah it doesn't matter whether you are saved or not you can be saved later on as you go but from that place because the, the energy of the mandate will force you into the vision. Is someone learning already? It's important that every vision that must thrive, especially to a global scale, the people who are connected within that vision must understand what they represent. Great organizations across the world, both in the Christendom and the secular, they have all kinds of creeds that indoctrinate the workforce, helping them to understand these as a basic modus operandi of the company. If you meet someone who works, say, in McDonald's, and you ask them certain things about the, it will be an embarrassment to the company that they just say, me, I'm selling here. I don't even know what we are here for. It's important you understand your message many believers and many organizations are not able to thrive because there is confusion and haziness as far as understanding the message is concerned number two very quickly for time the second essential that every calling every ministry must have is the strategy for execution i call it the pattern it's not enough to have the message you must have a st the strategy for execution in the kingdom we call it the pattern 
It's not enough to have a message. You must have a pattern. Back to Matthew chapter 10, and I'll begin my reading from verse 5. Lend me your attention. Please be patient as we read. Watch this. Jesus is commissioning the 12 now. The Bible says, Then these 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, watch, watch this now. He didn't just give them the great commission. He's revealing to them a pattern and a strategy. Go not the way of the Gentiles, and into any of the Samaritans enter ye not. I have a six. He says, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Verse 8. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. Verse 9. It says, provide neither gold, nor silver, nor brass in your purses. Uh -huh. Nor script for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staffs. For the workman is worthy of his meat. Notice what he's giving them now. Now, watch this. He says, verse 11, please. And into whatsoever city or town you enter, don't just start shouting and preaching. He says, inquire who is who in it is worthy, and there abide till ye go tens. 12. Reading to 16. And when ye come into a house, salute it, he says. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. And, what, and whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when ye depart of, out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. The last verse, it says, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Everybody says strategy. So you would see the disciples behaving in a certain way. Very strange and an unfamiliar path, but they were walking the pattern that they were given. Listen, just because you have a correct mandate does not mean you will succeed. It is important that you understand the pattern. Hallelujah. Two people can have the same mandate, exactly the same. The difference will be in the pattern that God has given them. Are we together? Very, very important. Number three, the third essential. Are you learning already? The third essential that any ministry must have is the platform. So number one, the mandate. Number two, the pattern. Number three, the platform. You must have a structure that allows you to do what you are doing. That structure can be your throne if you are Joseph or Esther. It doesn't have to be a church or a ministry. That structure can be your business. Anything that puts you to that elevated position where you are able to carry out your mandate with ease is called your platform. For most people, they think a platform is just going to register the name of a ministry or the name of an organization. No, no, no. The platform represents any structure, physical or otherwise, that is able to put you in a position where your voice can be heard. Influence is very powerful. Without a platform, you will not be able to communicate the counsel of God, no matter how sincere you are. Koinonia now, this ministry for instance, is a platform that has given us the influence, the credence, the visibility to be able to communicate the counsel of God freely. This is powerful. There are several thousands across the globe right now connecting across the social media space. There are several others that will be following by way of rebroadcast. There are several thousands others right here on site. You can imagine because of the power of a platform. Hallelujah. Number four. What is the fourth essential you need for any vision to experience the light of day? You need resources. You need resources. And resources are twofold. First and most important, human resources. And then material or financial resources. Please write this, we're learning. You need resources. 
in Romans chapter 10 when you read from verse 14 and 15 Paul is teaching us now how then shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard and how shall they hear without a preacher notice the progression the lesson now is in verse 15 and how shall they preach except they be sent as it is written how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things so it is important to have a preacher and it's important that that preacher be sent you need resources there are many great visions that are limited today because of the bankruptcy of human and financial resources remember Haggai chapter 1 and verse 8 Haggai chapter 1 and verse 8 very prophetic scripture go up the mountain he says and bring wood and build the house and I will take pleasure in it and I will be glorified go up the mountain resources are very important I have met men of God I have met several people including entrepreneurs who say apostle listen only God knows what is burning and boiling in my spirit as far as destiny actualization is concerned but I am incapacitated if you do not have men you will usually not have resources and if you have resources without men you will be frustrated because there are many things money cannot do hallelujah when God wants to honor a man he gives you access to men then he will help you with resources there are many people who will run away from men and chase money it's a very big mistake hallelujah the money is in the pockets of men so if you chase the money without the men you will be a thief you will still find yourself looking for men but in a wrong way hallelujah but resources are very important i submit to you by the integrity of god's word there are many books today that deserve to be written across the globe many people will tell you i had an encounter with jesus and God has placed something in my heart, but because of the bankruptcy of human and financial resources, they are not able to go far. There are many, many ministries. One of the blessings that God has given us is the ease of access to resources. And this is what has made it, it's made it easy to be able to communicate the gospel in truth with power and integrity. Imagine how saddening it would be for a pastor that whilst you are standing, you are preaching, you are thinking right now. You see, there was a phase in our lives and in ministry where we experienced the other side of preaching when you are owing and having all kinds of things. And it's not good. It can kill revelation. It's not only demons. Just the worry of knowing that you, as soon as this service is over, diesel, transportation, and then you can imagine a ministry this size. Imagine what the logistics that goes in. Imagine some of the ministries of our fathers across the globe. It takes a lot. You need resources. Men and then, and then financial resources. So you have to learn how to make those resources available to you God's way with integrity. Playing crooks and pranks and naughty and dirty manipulations in a bid to have access to men or in a bid to have access to resources will eventually backfire it's a matter of time can i tell you people do not have time wasting money on a foolish person people are not idiots they vet you and they make sure that you are worthy of their investment nobody will give you one naira and one dollar if you are not serious it is not money that makes a vision money only amplifies a vision your seriousness your commitment your dedication your servant heart your integrity people look at this and let me tell you when people find you brought by god but supported by your truthfulness there is no limit to what people can do to support you take this from me your support is only as easy as your seriousness if you are not serious forget about support Hallelujah. Just asking people to give you money because you feel you don't have money is almost fraud. If not fraud, there has to be a justification. Are we together? I'm not talking about money, but it's amazing how people just carelessly make a demand and believe that the whole nations should just give them money, bless them for what? 
people have to ensure number one you are serious with God two that you are a serious person first but if and when they do find you worthy of their investments I repeat there is no limit let me tell you the truth givers have not finished on earth oh. it's just that people are not visionary enough to make their giving worth the while so for a preacher here who is saying apostle I've tried this money thing is not coming among the many ways it comes is to be serious with both God and yourself and you are going to be serious for a long time and give the people an opportunity to watch to vet and even test your integrity is someone learning the same person who will not give you hundred thousand can give another person one billion naira. It's not about being greedy. It's that they've not found you to be serious enough. I want to hold a small program, maybe a small worship concert. Our budget is 100,000 and the man will not give you. He will keep asking you questions. When were you born again? Who was there when you were born again? Who followed you up? You know, and you are saying, is this what you are doing to me? And yet for someone else, they will come and sign a check 500 million 100 million 10 million and say this is our own honor and by god's grace it will not be the last time and sometimes they will do it and you will be aware some of this blind claiming of realms that you have not gotten to by growth is only a mockery of your spiritual life settle with god stay with god john wesley said set yourself on fire and the nations will come to watch you born that is true. Hallelujah. Are we together? My beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands. My beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands yes you are sing it one more time yes you So essential number one for every call and every mandate is that you must have and understand and know how to effectively communicate the message given to you. Number two, you must understand your pattern. The pattern always controls the glory. The pattern always controls the glory. The Lord told Moses in the book of Leviticus, he says, this is what the Lord command that ye should do and the glory shall appear unto you. So the pattern or the strategy for execution. Number three is the platform. You need to build a platform. Number four is resources. Number five, the backing. The fifth essential, the backing. In this case now, the anointing and the spiritual empowerment that support your call. Now you have told people you were called by God. When they come, it's time to prove it. No stories, no excuses. You said Jesus heals. They said we are here. You said carry all your sorrow and come. God sent me. They say here we are. You have no idea of the kind of sorrow I came to church with. So you should not be angry and give flimsy excuses because you told them God sent you. And in as much as you are a student learning and we continue and remain students, there is a minimum level of efficiency that if you have not attained, do not call people. You will only be calling people to embarrass yourself. Are we together? Yes. The backing. Matthew 10 and verse 1. Matthew 10 and verse 1. Jesus when he had called unto him the 12 disciples, the Bible says he gave them power. Someone say power. power. What did he give them? Power. 
he did not just give them a message he gave them power so if you receive the message don't start running wait till the power to prove the message comes to it is dangerous to run with the message alone the message without power will make you look like a liar because there are forces that have been sent by hell to make sure the message on your lips sounds like a lie the assignment of power is to insist that what you are saying is true listen carefully now this is a ministry of power you know that already so i mean is you breathe the air of power and the supernatural is a mandate that God should not listen to me listen to me don't blame people if they don't take pay attention to you let me tell you more than the message or in addition to the message you must obtain empowerment by the Spirit Micah 3 and verse 8 Micah chapter 3 and verse 8 it says but truly I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord I'm not just full of a message. I am full of power. Power to heal. Power to deliver. Power to restore. Power to rewrite the negative narratives over people's lives. The backing. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. Having mentored them for a period of three and a half years, he's about to release them officially and he left them with this message. But ye shall receive power. That means you can reject power because he didn't say you shall have. He said you shall receive. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me. It takes power more than a message or in addition to a message to be a witness. In Acts chapter 4 and verse 33, it's a popular scripture in this house. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all someone shout power. power this may be the missing link for someone maybe I'm speaking prophetically to a man of God maybe I'm speaking prophetically to a leader there is nothing wrong with your call you have stayed well to obtain the strategy can I tell you sincerely integrity of character is important but it is not enough to get the job done you need to understand your message and my goodness you need power especially in today's world you are a man of God you are hearing me God may be revealing to you that this is the missing link it's not like your call is not genuine you have not stayed and held on to the four horns of the altar until he said tarry in Jerusalem don't rush without power it's a risk oh power has come oh your power has come oh In the school of power there is no ignorance of his arrival mm -mm. it's impossible for power to come and you do not know when power came from Elijah to Elisha he turned immediately and said where is the Lord God listen there are things that take time to manifest power is not one of them as power arrives he starts speaking immediately I can tell you this Oh, 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 oh. I, 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 I. Ebenezer. Listen, we can spend a vigil this night as I tell you several sessions of impartations of genuine power from heaven I, I can tell you stories upon stories I can tell you graces and how they came and when they came 
your destiny must know what grace has arrived you can't keep acting powerless and wondering why increase is not coming is that right from the days of John and up until now the kingdom suffered violence it takes more than eloquence more than oratory you need power power against power above power that compels compliance hear me it takes power to see it takes power to hear and then it takes power to speak it takes power to compel people to leave their homes and their nations to come and hear you you must be joking just to believe it, it takes more than value my dear people no for people to ignore tribal sentiments ignore all kinds of interracial sentiments and stay to place a demand on the grace upon your life it takes power i know you are a prophet but the missing link is power i know there is an apostolic call evolving but the missing link is power i know you are a ceo i do not doubt your wisdom but there is power your speaking is like a lecture there is no power listen hear me when i say power i don't just mean falling down and shouting power is the capacity to bring evidence to your speakings the ability to bring solutions power the bible says where the carcasses are is that in your bible it says there the eagles will gather the world has not yet invented technology to ignore power no the world has not gone to that level where they see power and, 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 and throw it away. No, sir. The day God uses you to do something spectacular in the life of your family members, by themselves, they will say, God called you. Listen, our fathers who have joined the cloud of witnesses today, when you read the stories of men like Apostle Babalola, they didn't just come to say, I am called. You are joking. You don't bring cards and say, take, invite me. No, your power is your card. Genuine, authentic, apostolic power. Not manipulations and games. Look at the testimony of the gentleman who came here. I came in and I heard very touching testimony. A matured adult having that kind of thing. Never downplay the extent of problems that people have let me tell you when you become a solution by power you have caught the attention of a generation not assumed power not power with a lot of noise and then when it is now time for performance this is what we largely do respectfully speaking in the body of christ there is a lot of noise of what we claim we can do but in light of real results everybody just chickens away genuine apostolic power Jesus mentored them but it was not enough to release them and on the day of Pentecost when that power fell upon them Peter stood up and said this is that prophet Joel spoke about it this is that let me stretch my hands over someone in the name of Jesus let something from heaven come upon you let something from heaven come upon you I separate you from a natural life I separate you from a power a powerless life in the name of Jesus hear me you are a man of God here receive power power from heaven not just power in ministry power in business any dimension of result takes power apostle why are people not coming to my store what do you think brings them what do you think brought the animals to the ark of noah a suggestion an announcement before we get into the the doctrinal pillars this, this is just our pastor conference version oh. after that we'll continue the message Please pray in the spirit in one minute. Lord, power upon my life. 
Ekatos Ketebakatos. Genuine power upon my life. Someone pray. Genuine power. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Outside, pray. All the overflows, pray. Power upon my life. Ministry with results, genuine results, business with results, genuine results, leadership with results, genuine results, the capacity to provide solutions beyond the realm of intellect. hallelujah 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 now before we continue i want to pray a very special prayer there is a group of people here i see that god this thing that we call the hearing ear and the seeing eyes the lord is asking me in under this atmosphere to impart that grace i stretch my hands some of you your dreams are dead your visions are dead I stretch my hands right now wherever you are all over this auditorium all the overflows men and women alike at the count of three I stretch my hands let a miracle happen to your eyes your hearing and your seeing one two three receive that grace now receive that grace now receive that grace now I revive visions in your life. I revive supernatural encounters in your life. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Please be seated. Please be seated. So these are the five essentials five essentials five essentials help two people that will start running now i just saw this in a vision let there be an ignition upon your spirit man let there be an ignition upon your spirit man in the name of Jesus Christ. Shake parakos katebrende gebaruti. Let me do a one minute recap again. For any call, for any mandate, and any commission from God to find expression, essential number one, you must understand the message and the mandate a capture and a representation of your contribution number two you must understand the strategy given to you by god for execution your pattern number three you must trust god for grace to build a platform a structure that gives you visibility for the sake of expression Number four, you must trust God to understand the dynamics that is responsible for accessing resources, human and material resources. And number five, you must stay until something from heaven lands on your life. The backing from heaven. Moses said, if your presence will not go with us, hear me, if your presence will not go with us, don't say I'm a preacher, you are entering a land where witchcraft has been there for a long time and the only thing you came to give them is just stories. You are joking. See, with all due respect, there are many missionaries that traveled to regions, they just carried Bibles and carried malaria drugs without power. As soon as they got there, some of them did not even wake up the next day because we are dealing with spirits. It takes more than welfare to transform people. We are talking of people who have been hijacked and kept as slaves under the bondage of Satan. And you know in the body of Christ there is a lot of gyration. We talk so much. 
you will the the amount of power that sometimes those I desired the power of the Holy Spirit sincerely. That's what drove me to Reinhard Bonke's crusade. Even after my encounter with God, I said, Lord, that evangelistic power that grants a man grace to come to Africa from Germany and sweep across Africa, that grace, when it landed, I said, that's right. Let me submit to you, hear me. With all due respect, if I speak at this level and by the grace of God, I don't think I'm speaking in pride. We don't have everything, but there are some things we have. Let me counsel my generation. Please obtain grace from God to go back to the secret place. Our noise without power is too much. We are only going to embarrass ourselves. This is not how we started. I believe that there is a generation that is rising. They are not yet known. There are people hiding in the secret place. I'm building capacity men who will be like gods men who will not talk about power they will demonstrate the reality of the power of the Holy Spirit you will see healings like never before you will see resurrections like never before power that will win a whole nation in one day Let your power fall in this place. Let your beauty come in this place. We ask for signs and wonders. Let your power flow. In one minute lay your hands on your head and say Lord I'm available as as you are empowering men with this end time mantle father do not pass me by do not pass me by how can I run an apostolic ministry without genuine empowerment from heaven a prophetic ministry without genuine empowerment a Joseph ministry of economic influence and leadership without empowerment how can I rise as an Esther without empowerment hallelujah 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 so hear me please you see what makes a chef a chef is not just the ingredients is the combination you can be given the same ingredient that a chef uses and you will cook something that you are not even but that that guy has mastered the art of combining it and it takes training and it takes time I counsel again my precious dear generation let us manage premature manifestations we are saying and doing many things that are clearly bigger than our level of grace we need to obtain grace and stay and come out again with power refreshed power to demonstrate the validity of the kingdom are we together when God started with us there were certain things we knew that they were beyond the limit of the power available at that time. 
the Bible says to minister according to the measure of grace you want to speak over people's lives and shift spiritual climate can I tell you you know when some of you here are pilots and there's what they call flight hours to determine whether a pilot before he becomes um before he becomes what's what's the highest position now a captain you don't become a captain just because you graduated from flight school no you must have flight hours in fact for others they have to travel to other nations and fly using their weather and have certain levels of experience before you now move to become a captain when they say someone is a captain and you are flying a plane when he sees certain things whether a, 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 a change in atmospheric conditions he's already used to it he knows what to do with that plane the passengers are safe because they know he's there it is a risk for certain people to fly to certain altitudes or under certain kinds of climatic conditions it takes more than preaching to truly be a blessing you are going to have to obtain grace from God I have prayed and I continue to pray that God will keep heaping coals upon coals of fire upon my life as far as I'm concerned I have not gone close to where God I I desire I know what God has shown me sometimes I catch myself rebuking myself and say Joshua Selman you are too slow keep moving there are heights dimensions in the spirit you want power with God you must master the art and the dynamics of prayer you must master the art and listen let me tell you if you do not know how to stretch your spirit man forget about power for as long as the vessel was small the oil looked like the vessel you must enlarge capacity in the spirit I have taught you here that authority and power in the kingdom are in levels the least level of authority is authority over things then you graduate with God and he grants you authority over nations and regions the highest level of a sp a spiritual authority is authority over God's program he, he his blue his prophetic blueprint he puts you in charge of it by grace things nations his program are we together listen to me if this is all we do tonight I want to challenge somebody hear me this can't be it God is so much bigger than this hear me apostle and prophet no this is what not, not what the generation has been praying for this thing we are bringing now that we are bragging is not yet it thank God for where we have gotten to but I submit to you this is not the mantle that will bring that revival this generation will need more need more greater signs dimensions of wonder by the Spirit he's calling us deeper deeper This is a prophetic message for someone God is saying you left off the training I started with you by now we would have gone far in the school of the spirit but when God started as soon as you started getting invitations you graduated yourself from the school of the spirit and now you can see several things you should have learned you have not learned several dynamics in the spirit you should have known no. you see in the secular you can jump classes and read up and write an exam but in the school of the spirit any class you miss even if it's after 10 years you must come back for that lecture again 
just because you started seeing and you started hearing did not give you the credence to start prophesying the prophetic realm is a delicate and a complicated realm that takes mastery to be able to handle the speakings of the spirit Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. I've shared with you here, sit down please, please sit down. I've shared with you my vision of many years when God was showing me the mandate of this ministry. I remember in that vision, I stood in a room elevated and suddenly I had run in there because I was afraid. It looked like some people were threatening me or something of that sort. And I suddenly saw an endless sea of people an endless it was a whole generation and i was wondering and then the vision started zooming the people close to me and those in front started crying and they were beckoning on me and i said what is wrong and these were their words they said no food and no water i was so touched i said why who is the cause and they pointed their hands at me i said me why would i do such kind of evil against you and I made up my mind, I said, I'm coming to rescue you. But I was afraid. And then I made up my mind, I said, I will go. If I perish, I perish. As soon as I opened that door, there was a giant gray bearded man who was waiting for me. And he picked my little hand and said, I will walk with you. And he said, let's go. Now I know it's the Holy Spirit, you see. Listen, all you see is not all there is. There is a throne that backs men that produces this extraordinary dimensions of result did you verify your backing before you started you only verified your message did you verify your backing did you verify did you verify that every time you prophesy there is an anointing to make it happen or do you just believe it will happen because it happens for others? No. It is what God told you that you would defend in the open. Hallelujah. I remember in one of those visions, I was in a dark place. It was like a community, just like a, maybe a curfew and there were people seated, sick people, dejected, weak people, and I was passing among them. I said, I was crying. I said, what kind of disaster is this? And I heard a voice from the Spirit. And he says to heal them all. Every one of those encounters came with anointings. I've shared with you my encounter in Reinhard Bonke's crusade. Traveled down to Joss when he came for his crusade. I stood the first day for a long time he had preached. I was a man of God, but I had to shelve that thing. You don't receive from a man of God as a man of God. This is the problem with our arrogant generation. We are desperate for graces at our own terms. hallelujah I remember by the second day I had prayed and prepared I said Lord that which you have put upon this man simple teachings nothing no extraordinary revelation anywhere but tremendous power I said Lord what have you granted this man I remember six hours standing upon that field from 3 p.m. till 9 p.m. and I stood there as a man of God I made up my mind that I was not just going to stand, I wanted to serve. I saw them wheeling people from wheelchairs, take it, and I said, please let me join. They said, I'm not part of the committee. I said, what committee? I came here with hunger. I must walk. Let me serve God and serve that grace. I remember pushing some of the people to the front, and I said, Lord, this is how it will be in my meetings also. And without all contradiction, the lesser is blessed of the greater listen I stood there you've heard my story I stood there close to a pregnant woman 
Sometimes the woman will be tired and lean on me and you know, and you know in the crusades you don't sit down, you stand. I was almost saying, Madam, please, we all came here to receive too. This one that small time you'll be. But I was determined. Most people are not hungry enough to receive. There is a hunger level where there are no more excuses. Listen, Reinhard Bonke had finished preaching. Very simple message. Can't even remember what he preached. And then he was going to take a cup of water to now minister the baptism. And something happened. <laughs> My eyes were opened. And I saw the first manifestation of the Holy Ghost. I saw a giant bird. This is what I saw. Having like silvery bands. It was not, it was soaring, not flying. Hovering around the entire auditorium. I thought everybody was seeing it. But I was the only one who was seeing it. And I saw just moving round. Moving round. And the Holy Spirit took me to Genesis chapter 1 from verse 2 and 4. And the Spirit hovered round the face of the waters. And that was when God told me the union between the spoken word and the movement of the Spirit is what produces the miraculous. It came by revelation. Listen, by the time I was back to myself, I had turned and backed the stage. I did not even know when I turned. I knew that something had landed. Are we together? When I had the honor of going to pray in Daddy Geo's prayer room, I've told you as a man of God, when I was there, I was not asking for nonsense. It's a stupid thing to be asking for things at that point. As I locked myself there, I said, God, you gave gifts to men. Men rise by the impartation of God through men. What did you place upon this man that granted him grace across the nations? Lord, this is what I am praying for. And Jabez cried unto God. There is a way you get angry with your current level. I'm sharing this. We are products of many graces. I remember when God gave me an instruction to carry a seed and rise and go to Canaan land. I remember that I went there when I when I got there after I did what I would do I came out and the Holy Ghost told me to place my hand on the ground the ground there Canaan land I placed it on the ground there and he said from this day you have entered the overflow anointing one night I went to preach for a particular ministry and then I saw them I saw us entering MFM prayer city I said thank you Jesus they, for me, they were going to keep me in the guest house because where I was going to preach for was close to MFM there. And so they kept me at the prayer city. I said, thank you, Jesus. When I had finished and all the convoy and protocol went, I woke up late in the night and I went quietly there and said, Lord, you gave gifts to men. Whatever is needed in this place to be added for this assignment, let it land. Hallelujah. Let me tell you a story that I've not said here in a long time. In fact, I've never even said it. I traveled to a particular nation many years ago. And then they happened to keep me in a room. Where then, now, Prince Charles had, be, had been kept in that place too. And the king of Zulu had been kept in that place too. And when they kept me there, I woke up in the night and I was praying. I said, Lord, influence has a grace. There, there are graces that enthrone men as kings. The Bible says that we have been made unto our God kings and priests. Now that I've had the privilege to come here, I, this is not about physical royalty, that I use it as a point of contact. Is there any grace? You see, we don't always say the things that we do. But let me tell you, make no mistakes about it. Results are controlled by mysteries. Are we together? Yes. One of the last anointings surprisingly to land upon this ministry is the grace for wealth and abundance. You will be surprised. We started well and sincerely, but that grace was not there. Struggling after every crusade in debt, and, and, and you know, you, you can imagine how embarrassing that is. So when I talk to you about resources, I'm not talking stupidly. I know what I'm saying. 
I've told you where you are preaching on a crusade ground, shouting Jesus is Lord, and the people you are owing also are on the crusade ground too, waiting for the crusade to finish and let them say, where's our money? And I had to say, there, there must be a way out like this. If you continue ministry that way, you will stand at the corridors of compromise. Listen, I will quickly share with you some things and when I do, one of the things I'm going to do tonight is to just pray that some graces will rest upon your destiny this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. I told you our possibilities are controlled by the graces that we carry. I remember one night when I was watching the video of William Branham. I was watching his video on my laptop quietly seated in a room. And I was looking at the man and hearing him talk such a such a, a dispense of humility and I was saying look at people mocking this man you know because at the end of his life he brought some teachings that people were not comfortable with and they just carried the baby and the bad water and everybody even those who are not one tenth his dimension criticizing him and as I stood there and I was watching that video something happened to me it was like a cold sensation just landed on my head and started going down my body over a period of 30 minutes or so I remember I think the next meeting I was going to have was in Kaduna or so and I got into that meeting and it was like a joke I started delving deeper into dimensions of the prophetic that surprised me what grace have you ignored because of ignorance in 2007 I had a vision and in that vision I saw God's servant Bishop Oedeko and I was going to sow into his life and I was going to sow into his life and then when I sowed into his life he said there's still some more and I brought out some of the money and I sowed and I remember he took me to a room in that vision as soon as we opened the door I saw the room and there were several currencies there and I was asked to pick and I said what is this surprisingly there was no lust or attachment you know how you say ah uh, what, what they call it now that you just jump and start to, mm -mm. I just picked a few of them and that was it and when I came out I had the audible voice of God and that opened me up to a new dimension listen brothers and sisters I'm saying this to you so that you will ask tonight what is yet to land on my head that is making my life this way there has to be something left as for the spirit of revelation that one came directly from Jesus that when he appeared to me I've been blessed by several people across the body right from when we started you know Grace's books that I read, E.W. Kenyon, Kenneth Hagin, and all these great men. But in that encounter, that light that left Jesus and entered into me, it was like a straight line from Genesis to Revelation. Hear me. Your prophetic will remain like a lie until grace really comes on you. Some of you are called into the ministry of kingdom financing but your hand is empty because the only thing you are thinking about is business in this realm of financial dominion it takes more than business believe me there is there is a there is there is a, a relationship with the Holy Ghost my beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands my beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands Yeshua ah.
hear me there are many of you here the missing link is the grace for influence God has anointed you but you cannot reach those he has sent you to because Esther once you are in Shushan you cannot reach the king Joseph once you are in prison you cannot reach Herod Daniel once you are down you cannot be able to save Babylon there are mantles and ministries that require you to rise to a level of visibility where those you are sent to can hear you hear me there are some of you there are levels of resources you need to have access to because the people God is sending you to you will need resources as a leverage to compel their hearing that realm is the realm beyond buying and selling hmm. these are realms where you transact realities from the realm of the spirit in addition to whatever value it is that you provide please hear me tonight's teaching is very prophetic the next 10 20 minutes that we're getting into i'd like you to be sensitive to the things that i'll be sharing because i'm going to be speaking prophetically and i sense in my spirit that whilst you listen to me for many of you it will be as it were i think in acts chapter 10 now and verse 44 or so that while peter yet speak these things the holy ghost fell on them which heard his word i believe that for some of you right now there are destiny activations as i will be teaching right now hear me there are there are many things it is it is from the bowels of your spirit deep is calling on to deep the violin for me Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus now please hear me for those who are following online you may need to call your loved ones or call a man of God or a prophet to tell him connect now the next 10 20 minutes there are very strange destiny impartations that will be happening to people and happening to ministries there are some of you who are following right now you may need to call your husband your wife and say leave what you are doing come and settle down i'm not even saying here people who are following some of you are following by way of television some of you are following it's time for the mandate to speak please sit down please sit down mm. I want to list for you the seven doctrinal pillars that make up this vision there are seven doctrinal pillars that make up this vision you call koinonia this is the jurisdiction of the mandate that have been given by God I may not have all the time to just teach on them I just want to list them and we'll pray no eye has seen, no ear has heard. Someone in the media, I just saw the power of God. But I submit to your work in me till Christ be formed in me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. Submit to your work in me till the Christ. 
must be formed in me till your glory be formed in me till your power rests on me so I submit to your work in me till Christ be formed in me Pillar number one, please write if you can, if you're with the Holy Ghost, that's fine. You came to church. This is what this is about. The seven doctrinal pillars that make up this vision. Number one is the message of salvation. This is the first pillar. Seven of them God has given the message of salvation. This is the first and the greatest mandate that we have. Please listen, Koinonia Global, everyone who is part of this vision, I want you to hear. This represents the jurisdiction of our call, our assignment, the mantle that works upon this vision. Number one is the message of salvation. John 3, 16 and 17. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, John 3, 16 and 17, that whosoever believeth in him, listen carefully, should not perish, but have everlasting life. 17 says, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Our first mandate as a ministry is to see to it that the revelation of Jesus as Savior reaches the ends of the earth in order of priority the greatest task and assignment upon this vision and indeed i believe it extends to every true commission of jesus christ across the globe is the message of salvation predicated upon the fact that all have seen romans chapter 3 and verse 23 and 24 it says all have sinned and come short of the glory of god this is the verdict of God as touching the fallen man. Verse 24, it says, Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 10, and when you read from verse 10, Romans 10 and verse 10, here's what it says, that with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verse 11, we're reading to 13. He said, For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him, hallelujah, shall not be ashamed. Verse 12. It says, For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek when it comes to the need for salvation. There is no difference between the educated and the uneducated. There is no difference between Yoruba, Hausa, Igbo. There is no difference between the Spanish, the Indian, the Caribbean. As far as the need for Jesus is concerned, it says, For the same Lord is rich over all who call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Our assignment is to propose Jesus as Savior, to reveal the plan of redemption. I have told you, the gospel of salvation is a revelation of the Father's love revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus, his Son. Are we together now? To the end that men and creation, listen carefully, that as you place your faith upon Jesus, you would receive the life of God. That is the promise that we have been given. We must let the nations know that Jesus saved. Not just that Jesus gives prosperity. In order of priority, the salvation of their soul is far superior to prosperity and any other thing. This is why we travel from pillar to post. This is why we carry the burden of the gospel across the nations. It is more than just an exegesis of truth. You only transform people who are saved. Remember in this house, I have taught you that the greatest need of an unbeliever is salvation. The greatest need of an unbeliever is not welfare. Welfare may provide a momentary succor. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. 
Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Nada uka kasunanka ubangi chika isaya bo na girma masunanka ubangi chi ni nada uka kasunanka ubangi chika isaya bo na girma masunanka. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. For as long as he keeps us alive and for as long as there is breath in our nostrils, we will let the nations know that he died for them. That there is a way out. They must not go to hell. The Holy Ghost is walking with us. He says, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you. This is why we are doing our UK conference. This is why we are going to the US, Canada and as many places as he would take us. This is why we travel from pillar to post within and outside this nation. Sometimes you are tempted to ask why this stretch? I saw our father in the Lord Daddy Gio and at his age, this man still travels from pillar to post. And one time I got into a discussion with one of his people and I said, wow, daddy is still traveling like this, won't he rest? And they laughed. He said, I will rest when I get to heaven. Now, that is a warrior indeed. That for as long as he's alive and breathing with this body, even if it means to spend it for him. The gospel, the message of salvation. Believers, anybody who is not harvest conscious, mission conscious is not truly connected to this vision the first pillar that drives what we do the first message is the message of salvation number two very quickly what is the second doctrinal pillar that drives this vision the message of transformation write it down when we get people saved we do not leave them at that realm the Bible says in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, it says, But be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that which is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. Ephesians 4 and verse 18 says, Having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy 3, 15 to 17. Watch this. 2 Timothy 3, 15 to 17. This is why the word of God in this ministry gains utmost supremacy and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scripture which is able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith that is in Jesus Christ. Reading to 17, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness. Why? That the man of God may be perfect. The word perfect there means matured, entire, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. That means scripture affects every realm of life. Whether you are in ministry, you are in business, it can make you furnished unto all good works. The message of transformation is what brings us into the, the teachings of the mysteries of the kingdom. The ability to impart wisdom, knowledge and understanding. The teaching ministry is built upon this second mandate. The message of transformation. Don't forget what we are considering tonight. This is the message. The seven doctrinal pillars that guide and represent what we do. The message of transformation. So every week when you come in and as we travel across the regions, teaching from one dimension to the other, the spirit of revelation that he has granted us so lavishly is to the end that the saints be equipped, be entire, be matured. And I can tell you that for as long as he keeps us, alive and healthy we will continue to learn the ways of god 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you ready for the third? Very quickly. What is the third doctrinal pillar that makes up this vision? The message of empowerment. The message of empowerment. God has granted us the unique ability to reveal and demonstrate the reality of his power. That under our watch, our generation cannot be bankrupt of power. This cannot be a powerless generation. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, we read it already. Micah 3 verse 8, we read it already. This is where the teaching on the ministry of the Holy Spirit comes. Listen, when you see us spend time in worship, when you see us spend time building intimacy with the Holy Spirit, when you see us invest time in the prayer ministry, it is because we have been given the message of empowerment. Acts chapter 2 and verse 42, the Bible says they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayer. Acts chapter 6 and verse 4, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Are we together? Yes. We must pray and cultivate intimacy with the Holy Spirit. We have been given the message of empowerment. Can I tell you, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is real. This is why you see some of the manifestations that happen, happen. It is because it is not just a desire. It is a mandate and a ministry. And there are angels that are sent to signify that revelation. According to Revelation chapter 1 and verse 1, the revelation of Jesus, which he gave unto John to show his servant the things that must shortly come to pass. The Bible says, and he sent it and signified it by his angel. When God gives mandates, there are angelic release that ensure that every time you are walking in that mandate, certain results should happen. He sent it and signified it by his angel so the message of salvation the message of empowerment i mean the message of transformation the message of empowerment what is number four very quickly the message of the supernatural this is where signs and wonders come in hallelujah signs and wonders the ministry of the supernatural the message of the supernatural signs wonders deliverances breakthroughs god has not only given us the mandate to impart his grace and to empower god's believer but the demonstration of the reality of the kingdom the supernatural signs and wonders and miracles acts 4 33 and the Bible says, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. Let's read Romans 15, 19 together. Romans 15, 19 together. It says, through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. The gospel of Christ is not fully preached until the dimension of signs and wonders is captured. It said through mighty things, through mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Holy Spirit, so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Illyricum, I have fully preached. We will not preach a half gospel. The ministry and the message of the supernatural. That means the supernatural should not be strange to you as a believer and then connected to this vision. It's why you see all kinds of things. There are strange manifestations of the spirit that sometimes I just wonder. He's in Koinonia remaining to just have people start flying around while service is going on. <laughs> By wisdom, O oh God, heaven's gates open up. With understanding you order the seasons Creating day and night Turning darkness into light Arranging the stars to your pleas Number five 
what is the fifth doctrinal pillar are you ready number number five is a very serious one the message of purpose write it down the message of purpose kingdom advance put in bracket and societal transformation the message of purpose kingdom advance and societal transformation this is where our teachings on witnesses raising agents of change and so on and so forth understanding the cosmos you see now you see me bring several teachings i'm showing you that the teachings that you hear week in and week out are guided by these pillars the message of purpose watch this what gives credence to your empowerment what gives credence to all your desires is purpose and this is the challenge respectfully speaking with the body of christ we understand things we want things but we do not connect them to purpose we want prosperity without purpose increase without purpose this is where i so greatly miss dr miles monroe hearing me from heaven may god bless you sir I will say it more personally when we get there but for now on behalf of Jesus and his people thank you for helping us walk in purpose it is the reason why by the grace of God he brought the message of purpose and of the kingdom his first book that I read discovering your potential or understanding your potential and then all of his books about the kingdom any of his book you find read it you have my endorsement provided it is him please read it hallelujah now watch this it was dr miles munro by the grace of god that brought the transformative dimension of the gospel to me because coming from an evangelical background with all due respect we were not properly mentored in translating the reality of the gospel to a context that advances kingdom and transforms society and many many men and women of God respectfully speaking we are very limited in our doctrinal scope I was having a discussion with some diplomats earlier this year and we were discussing Africa they, you know and um, just discussing why in spite of the several churches in Africa and several of us men of God we have not seemed to attain onto a standard of freedom from corruption moral decadence and other things and I did observe lovingly and respectfully to them that the problem is the content and the scope of our teachings that there is hardly applicability to the many teachings that are upon our pulpits and I say this with every sense of honor respect and responsibility there is a lot of gyration there is a place for that there is a lot of you know spiritism activities you know but the the, the point of application when you study homiletics classically speaking in theology one of the things they teach you homiletics is the art of teaching and preaching there must be a point of application to your teaching are we together so no matter what route you take at the end of your discourse you are mandated to leave your audience with the point of application they must know what to do with the message you have given them and let me tell you this i, I think it was while i was preaching in ghana that i said this we must be able to bring the context of the gospel in africa that empowers people to be useful monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday and the key is purpose are we together if i teach you on prosperity i must teach it in such a way that does not just make you a money monger and a fanatic just wanting money without purpose is why we have a lot of young people right now on rampage once they touch a few millions they begin to misbehave because they were only taught finances without god and without purpose so they crash land what was supposed to be a blessing destroys them a man gets married to a woman they don't understand the purpose of the marriage so they don't know what to do with themselves a man gets a job he got educated does not know what to do purpose is what gives longevity to impact are we together 
so when we teach about being witnesses when we teach about being ambassadors as god has so graciously granted us the grace to have a, the unique expression of our school of ministry all of this is in honor to this foundational pillar the message of purpose we must understand god's program we must understand societal transformation hallelujah in john chapter 18 and verse 37 john 18 37 let's look at a few scriptures john 18 37 watch this jesus is standing before pilate and here's what he has to say pilate therefore said unto him art thou a king then jesus answered thou sayest that i am a king he said to this end was i born and for this cause came i into the world that i should bear witness unto the truth and everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice say purpose acts chapter 26 when you read from verse 12 this is now apostle paul standing before king agrippa if you remember to make defense of the gospel they had granted him an opportunity audience with king agrippa and here was his discourse whereupon as i went to damascus with authority and commission from the chief priest uh-huh it says at midday o king i saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which journeyed with me 14 it says and when we were all fallen to the earth i heard a voice speaking to me and saying in the hebrew tongue saul saul why persecutest thou me it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks 15 it says and i said who art thou lord and he said i am jesus whom thou persecutest watch purpose now but rise and stand upon thy feet for i have appeared unto thee for this purpose to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things which in which i will appear unto you reading to 19 it says delivering thee from the people and from the gentiles unto whom i now send thee to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of satan unto god that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me the last verse he says whereupon o king agrippa I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. Without purpose, there is nothing to be obedient unto. Listen to me. Dr. Miles Munro will say your purpose and assignment is not what you are living for. It's what you can die for. When it has to do with purpose, it takes more than living. You must be willing. The hymn writer says, I'll be a true soldier. I'll die at my post. Nobody will kill you. You will finish your assignment in full. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke untimely death. Amen. Don't fear death. Death has an ear. It is a rider upon one of the four horses in Revelation. The rider upon the pale horse, he said, his name is death. Death is a spirit. You can cast it far from you. It is not a mysterious phenomenon that has that has unrestrained dominion over you no sir the bible says oh death where is your sting and oh grave where is your victory for death could not hold him captive even in the grave jesus is lord for death will not hold me captive even in the grave Jesus listen I want you to have an understanding that until your assignment is done no spirit not by witchcraft not by accident not by bloodshed of wicked men and terrorists now don't feel bad about those who may have gone before you don't worry thank God they died in Christ but since you are now alive somebody say I will finish strong let the devil hear you say I will finish strong by this profession of faith i cause every manifestation of untimely death as a pattern if there is anyone here your family members just seem to be dying anyhow and you are asking who is the next person i say it prophetically the last death will be the last don't drive out in the morning wondering will i return 
did you not read what the psalmist said that I slept and I waked for the Lord sustained me listen if there was anybody who should die in the Bible a lesson to refuse to die is Job a man who had all the boils and the plagues I'm not a medical doctor but I know there is no record of Job going to the hospital in that situation he should die he refused mm. I know my Redeemer liveth, he said. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. And at the end of his life, he was healthy enough to have double of children again. Say, I refuse to die. Refuse to die. This is not out of fear. No. In Christ, even when he said to be absent in the body, is to be present with the Lord. But Paul said that I remain is expedient for you. There are lands to conquer. There are several things to do. Are we together? Yes. Several lands to conquer. Don't, don't, don't glorify death in a point to a point that you make it look as if it can just take you anyhow. No, that's not what happens to believers. The Bible calls transition for the believer sleep. And it says, they that sleep, sleep at night. When you sleep in the daytime, it's called siesta. It's a short nap to rise up. They killed Paul. He said, I've not finished. They killed him again. He said, I've not finished. When he finished, he said, I've finished. Even Jesus said, it is finished. Everybody saying it is finished. And then they leave. For as long as you have not said it is finished, it is not over. Are we together? The message of purpose. In Matthew chapter 5 from verse 13 to 16, Jesus was speaking about the, about the believer in Christ. Here's what he calls us. With respect to purpose, he says we are salt. He said we are light. Go to verse 16 for sake of time. In verse 16, he says to let your light so shine before men. These are the teachings that now relate to purpose. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven matthew 28 please give us from verse 18 to 20. we call this the great commission here's what jesus said to do he spake unto them saying all power the word power there is exousia authority in is given to me in heaven and in earth 19. go ye therefore does that look like a mandate and teach all nations this synoptic account does not just say preach the gospel as Mark presented his own. He said, take time and teach how many nations? So don't ask me what I'm doing in UK. Don't ask me what I'm doing in the US. Don't ask me what I'm doing in Canada. Once he gives us the matching order, we have a scripture that backs us. If he says, teach all nations, it means he's opened the door for the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The last verse, he said, teaching them to observe all the things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, while you are on this business, know that I am with you all way, even to the ends of the world. Hallelujah. Purpose. Very, very important. Jesus was teaching us how to pray. And in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 10, he said, Thy kingdom come, and he said, Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Jesus is interested in the earth. Listen to me. Purpose and destiny is very important. It's not just enough to be anointed. It's not just enough to be warded. You must be purpose driven and your purpose i have taught you here endlessly and i will repeat myself again your purpose represents your contribution first to kingdom advancement and then to societal transformation every purpose in christ has a twofold approach it benefits the program of god and it benefits the nation wherein you are domiciled. There is no man that has been used by God that was a cause to his society. That is why I dare to say that the church is not a nuisance. The true church is not a nuisance, not to Nigeria, not to any nation. We are active contributors of nation building by number one, connecting people to faith 
which becomes the principle that guides their moral conduct etc number two giving them a superior orientation albeit driven from scripture that helps them to make quality decisions that eventually translate to advancement development and nation building the church is not a curse the true church is not a curse you shut down the church in any nation if that church is truly light that nation should experience moral decadence and bankruptcy to a point that the government says no 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 we have seen your value you are light you are salt are we together that means because koinonia is here in abuja in nigeria and across the globe connecting by way of covenant every nation where we are represented not just physically but even if there is one person who is connected to this ministry anywhere across the globe your territory should see jesus in your life are we together praying in the holy ghost and jumping and becoming a nuisance to society is 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 not um you are not representing the gospel properly hallelujah the message of purpose let me finish up number six what is the sixth foundational pillar doctrinal pillar that makes up this vision are you ready the message of unity and love the message of unity and love when we talk about love and you hear me emphasize the unity of the body of christ it's not just a passion this message is so powerful bless god for my dear parents they named me even after this mandate not knowing my name means the way to love very powerful name some of us come from backgrounds where they name you after something if if, if your name is is a cause change it there is nowhere changing your name leads you to hell people change their name jabez changed his name are we together I said what kind of thing did my mother call me like this i love her but i will change it oh god change my story jacob held on to god and said i'm not a cheat and a supplanter change my destiny hallelujah i hope you know that names are very prophetic yes it's not just a means of identification when they call you they are invoking something upon your destiny why would god change a man's name from abram to abraham sarai to sarah cephas to peter saul to paul see in your bible because of a name a prophet's mouth was shut john wanted to call only god knows what his father would have called him he would have called one kind of jewish thing that would have destroyed that young boy's destiny and the angel says shut his mouth he's a priest if he keeps calling by that name until he agreed john on paper his mouth open no prayer <laughs> hallelujah parents name your children well don't hold a, a godless ceremony where people are drinking and smoking and somebody just comes out under the influence of spirits and say it shall be called this no right from the time you're listen listen i'm not please i'm not being i'm not being sarcastic i'm serious here this is we're speaking about the mandate are we together let me advise you naming ceremony does not have to be some some activity of the flesh driven by people who don't even fear god i expect any responsible father from when your wife tells you she's pregnant you should be on your knees like manoah lord this child that is coming from heaven what is his destiny what name do we call him you don't sit down and place a lifelong identification upon somebody just under the influence of familiar spirits hallelujah he shall be called john for jesus the angel had to come and say he shall be called jesus emmanuel joseph did not say jesus looks like a nice name if he was wrong if he imagine if jesus's name was john look at the confusion that would have happened to their ministries back to our discussion the message of unity and love listen to me 
I truly believe with all my heart that the unity of faith is attainable. This is the reason why you see as a ministry and as a person, I have profound honor for the body of Christ. You will never hear me call a man of God's name to criticize him, to tear him down. No, I may challenge wrong doctrines. I have my reservations, but God has given me the flexibility to navigate around the body. I have preached in, maybe there are few major denominations where I have not preached in. Severally. All kinds of places have gone there. And some of them, they may not even think I may come because they feel, ah, will you come? I say, me? I'll come. Hallelujah. Expecting perfection from the body in terms of blamelessness is a waste of time. It will never happen. God gave me this revelation. Listen to my teaching, the unity of faith. It is very important. John said, I saw seven lampstands. And in the midst of the lampstand, he said, was one who looked like the son of man. The lampstand represents the Catholic church, the universal church. With all her imperfection, Christ is still in the midst of her. If you look for trouble in church, you will find it. If you look for Satan in church, you will find him. You will look, you, it, the church is a place where you find everything you are looking for. Because he says, he that seeketh, find it. You are looking for wicked people in church, you will find them. You are looking for hypocrites in church, you will find them. Are we together? You are looking for unserious people who are not born again, you will find them. Witches and wizards, you will find them. Familiar spirits, you will find them. The Holy Spirit, you will find him. This is a church. And in the midst of it, Jesus is still standing by that, her wife, like a faithful husband. Do you leave your wife when she's injured? If you run away from your wife because of an injury, are you a good husband? He's a faithful husband. He loves unto death. He stands by his Eve. No matter how bruised, he still stands. Are we together? Yes. We must preach unity in the body of Christ. This is why you see me advocating. I dislike and I detest men of God taking advantage of their pulpit to tear down other people no no don't if you're a man of god here don't do it don't do it that is not your assignment don't stand to tear down another man of god's work and criticize other people no 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 you can challenge wrong doctrines you can correct what needs to correct but respect what everybody is doing because you see the trouble in the body of christ will never end provided people keep fighting others every time you fight a man of God those who are loyal to that man of God and love the vision will respond to and so the, the, the fight will be endless there are many people who have no business fighting one another is their fathers their spiritual fathers that have caused that thing because subliminally they have communicated a body language once I see you associating with this and that you are a demon you are a devil it is wrong that doctrine comes from the pit of hell. It's a doctrine of demons. Once upon a time, the disciples looked at some people and said, should we call down fire? And Jesus looked at them. This is a generation better than Elijah's generation. Elijah calls down fire. Jesus converts and brings people by his mercy. Are we together? Yes. Do not use your status, your influence, or your position to tear down. No. Respect the fathers. Give the fathers their due honor. Our fathers of faith in this nation deserve our honor till the day they go to their graves. I don't care what we see or what we do not see. Noah saw his father, I mean, um, the sons of Noah saw their father's nakedness. One of them was laughing at the nakedness because Noah was drunk. The other went behind and covered the father's nakedness even though the father was drunk he woke up and knew who saw him and said who was watching me while i was drunk and he cursed him he said a servant of servants shall you be the eyes of eli may be dim but eli is still prophet samuel it will take eli for your anointing to come to manifestation let's be careful especially the generation rising just because by reason of elevated grace we can see some things that may need to be corrected. You've heard me say it. The people we are raising are also seeing our own mistakes. There will be a corrected version of us. And there is nothing to be proud of, to, to be ashamed about. One generation improves upon another. 
we saw all the mistakes of Papa Hagen and our fathers. We read some of their books and we say, wow, this man is great, but look at the limitations here. This is what they saw. Revelation is progressive. All that we are shouting and bragging today, I've told you, there is a generation God is preparing. I'm only praying that humility will keep them till they even manifest. One day they will listen to Joshua Selman's message and they will lovingly correct a few things. They'll say, wow, look at what he said. Well, it's at his level. Absolutely. It will be pride to believe we are the omega of revelation. No. Does not, it, it, that, is, that is an insult to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Sow a seed of honor now. So that when your turn comes, your sons both physical and spiritual, even when they see the gaps in your understanding, because you sow the seed of honor to the fathers, you will also receive a harvest of honor from the sons. Are we together? Very important. I preach the message of unity to the body of Christ and I've said it again and again. Make reference to my birthday broadcast. I don't know if it was last year or year before last. And I thought that there are keys that help people. Number one is mutual honor. You cannot downgrade. Listen, this is a charge, respectfully speaking. Every man of God that has the ears to listen to me now, listen. You don't tear down, demean a man of God, demean the work he's doing, demean the ministry, demean everything, and then expect unity. It doesn't work that way. It's like slapping you, matching your feet, pushing you, and then saying, come and hug me, we are one. And then doing it again. It does not work that way. See, let me tell you, as a principle, when I travel to regions, because of what God has done and, you know, the grace that he has placed upon our lives at this level, people get excited and sometimes I can already sense that, you know, these things come, frankly speaking, with maybe a sense of intimidation here and there, and I meet men of God, colleagues in ministry, senior colleagues, sometimes contemporaries, and then those who are looking up to us. And you can see sometimes this sense of unworthiness. Apostle Joshua Selman is in town. I am very quick to observe it. That listen, I have not come to downplay and demean and rubbish what the men of God are doing. It is because they are serious that we can even have a crowd to preach to. I have only come to support what they are doing. And you see that a lot of the pastors, their hearts are open and they support, they embrace. When you see pastors look like they are fighting one another, it's not because they are evil people. It is because either the man of God always gives an impression like everybody is doing nonsense. We are the ones who know what we are doing. It's a very wrong philosophy. Or number two, Joshua Selman will come into a city and push everybody and make it look like you are not serious. No. Sometimes we are sitting and discussing with men of God and I say, okay, about this question, say something. I say, ah, I should say what? Where you are here? And I say, what does that mean? You know, for some of you, you will be happy because it means, ah, be careful. That's how many die. If the Holy Ghost is there and is listening, who are you not to listen? Hallelujah. I have sat down with people, fellow men of God, pastors, and even my dear sons and daughters in ministry. Sometimes I ask them questions and I keep quiet and I listen to them. And I listen sincerely to learn. One of the greatest transformation in this ministry came about maybe 12, 12 or 13 years ago. When I asked everyone who were very small then that time, maybe a little, not more than three, four hundred everybody to write his suggestion on what we can do to improve the ministry don't write your name so that we don't even know who you are be polite be sincere but state what can happen i sat down and i read every one of those suggestions i was amazed at the intelligence of the people i was leading can i tell you when you become alpha and omega your ministry will become a reflection of your limitation but when you open up sincerely knowing that I'm only called by grace, it does not mean I know everything. Now, people can be able to support you in love with superior intelligence. Anything I do not know something about or not enough about, sincerely, even if it is a baby that can teach me, I will humble myself and listen. How can I learn to improve myself? Run away from pride.
is a killer. When Jesus sat down with the little children, he was not preaching to them. He was listening to them. You would be surprised what he got from them. Are we together? Are we together? So, you are part of this vision. Understand that God has given us a message to mend some of these unnecessary broken relationships in the body of Christ that has short-circuited the program of God. And let me tell you, for every man of God who has contributed to promoting love and unity in the body of Christ, as a ministry, we honor and we salute you. May God bless you wherever you are and whoever you are, whether in Nigeria and in Africa, that you have become an active contributor. Listen. I have traveled to places where I've seen the things that men of God have done for me. I've been humbled by their humility. Some of them literally shelved their ministries and everything. This UK conference we are planning now, you cannot imagine how many people, pastors and leaders, as though they don't have churches, plunging their all. How could you dishonor people who bend over backwards that much? No. I travel to go and minister and sometimes the men of God will tell me, Apostle, this is home. Feel free. Some of them will vacate their offices and vacate their seats for me to sit down and counsel people. And the man of God who heads the church will be standing somewhere like a protocol. And I feel very uncomfortable. I say, sir, please, come and sit down. Let's do it together. And they say, no, 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 Apostle. These people traveled and they came to see you. What, what security to be able to do that? And then I would come and now downplay them. Would that be fair? And then say, let's be one. No. No. There must be mutual respect in the body of Christ. Listen, if you don't believe another man's mandate, leave him with God. But an attempt to fight another man's mandate, when he succeeds, you will bend your head in shame forever. There are many, many young people today who were mocked at, talked bad at, and now God is helping, lifting them across Nigeria, Africa, and those who said all kinds of things. Maybe they made mistakes. No. Don't call on clean what God has called clean. Are we together? Yes. I believe in people. When I travel to Zaria, or sometimes you see people from various campuses, they come here to see me after service. And some of those people come to see me and they are looking as if they are looking at some angel and I tell them, gentlemen, listen, everybody was at this level. Some of us, we were not believed that when we were at that level. There were people who even prayed that we failed. It's the mercy of God that brought us this far. So my job is to love you and I look, if there is anything to correct, you correct in love and support them. For as long as I live, I will be an active supporter of younger ministries coming. I say this and I will repeat it again. Where there is need for correction, you correct, you guide, you help, but you don't throw the baby under bad water. Some of the people God is raising will be by far better than us. Some of you are here looking at me. Don't worry, just keep listening. Where you see that we did not do well, just pray for us. But I tell you, let God sharpen you like an arrow and you will become an improvement to what we are doing. In the name of Jesus Christ, the message of unity and love. So after service, do well to hug someone. Some of you already came and you insulted everyone. Those who are sitting near you, it's as if they are unclean. Because you are prophet yourself. Who are sat down there now? Be careful. This sermon is to edit, to give you a new orientation. Don't look down at people. Yes, they may not have revelation like you. Yet, yes, they may not have this and that. But be disciplined. Is this indiscipline that is destroying people in church? They will tell someone, come and take offering. You will come and say, I'm seeing something. And spend two hours wasting time because of, no. Closing prayer. Pray and go and sit down. I hope you are learning. You must learn to forbear. Learn to forbear. Learn to forbear. Many people will annoy you, including me. Learn to forbear. Learn to forbear. More than forgive, learn to forbear. Apostle, you don't know my pastor, the way I'm even looking at him now, it's as if I should carry a, mm, That is now a Luciferian spirit. Don't go that route. No. Love. 
Walls of pride and prejudice shall cease When we are your instruments of peace Lord, make us instruments of your peace Where there is hatred, let your love increase Lord, make us instrument of your peace. The walls of pride and prejudice shall cease. When we are your instrument of peace. Today, God has helped me, but I'm a product of many ministries. I have honor and regard to all the people that God used to raise me. Many of them are alive today. I honor them till the day that they see his face. My principal in the seminary is still alive. And every time I have the opportunity to honor him, I will honor him. Archbishop Benjamin Kwashi, honor them. These are fathers of faith that saw us and believed in us when there was nothing. Can I tell you? some of the pastors we used to do evangelism every saturday discipleship not this thing that pentecostals do proper discipleship that you sit down with a notebook already prepared it's not what you are guessing hospital visitations all of these things was part of the training that has made us today just because god has helped us to be where we are we should never look down at them. Some of them may not have all the revelation, but we don't come close to the character and stability that some of them have. Some of you may need to go back to some of your orthodox churches and greet your reverend, even as a prophet, and bend your head and say, good afternoon, sir. And if he says, my son, how are you? John, don't say, no, they now call me prophet John. What is that? You bend that head and let him bless you sincerely. Are, are you listening now? Yes. Don't say I've become a big man. There are people till tomorrow if I see, if I cannot go down my knees, I will bend my head in honor to them. Their impact in my life remains indelible till Jesus comes. One of the people that God used to get me filled with the Holy Spirit, they visited my family house sometime last year. When I was told, I was so, so happy. A dear woman of God, years ago from Kaduna State, that God used, God used this woman to file us in the spirit. As young people, it was under her watch and her brother, we started something called Operation Catacruz. He was praying in tongues till morning. Hmm. Now she's gone to be with the Lord. I said they should find where her child is. And may God grant me the grace that I will sponsor that child till she's done. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, we're going to pray. But I want to encourage you before I give you the last one. Some of you may need to go back memory lane and start thinking of the people who believed in you when you were nothing. Are we together now? And start come back to them and say God has helped me now it doesn't have to be in the fivefold ministry and see what you can do to help them if they don't need your help you can do something to their children oh I hear that your child is now in secondary school how much is the school fees 20,000 we've paid half remaining half and you are a multi-millionaire that's an insult to you what is your millions for then when you can sit down and say young boy just love God let me take off this stress and help you your father did this and that to me there was a time I was crying your father could not preach but he came and wrapped his arms around me don't forget people who help you when you rise but my message is that as a ministry we have been given a message of love and unity I don't just preach to you God knows and you know that I love you from the depth of my heart even the devil knows you cannot preach to a people that you really do not love. When I meet with the workers, they know that I love them. They know that I love the leaders. I will never use people in this ministry. It is to love and to give. The Bible says a good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. 
the message of unity and love so from tonight become an advocate of unity and love don't because of your love and passion for koinonia and joshua selman tear down any man of god and tear down any ministry and say you guys are just playing in your church you are playing games come to koinonia and see things mm -mm. that is not part of your assignment you are doing another thing that god did not ask you to do are we together till today as a man of god there are people today I can hear that they are organizing programs somewhere. And I call someone and say, okay, send me this man. Okay, how are you? I hear you are organizing a program somewhere. Yes, so apostle. I'm just saying it not for pride, but for you to know, okay, here's a little seed to support you people on what you are doing. And some of them are aware of some of, some of the not too good things that they've said. And that does not matter. Like Joseph, when God has elevated you, it's easy to forgive and let go. When you are lifted, you are lifted. You are lifted by God. There's nothing the devil can do about it. There's one song that says, The Spirit of God is upon me. Even the devil knows that I am a winner. You know that song? The Spirit of God is upon me. Even the devil knows that I am a winner. If you rise by knowledge, you don't fear your growth. Because wisdom and knowledge, according to Isaiah 33, are stabilizers. They bring you stability. You only fear your success if you rise by mistake. Are we together? Let me give you the last and then we'll pray. Thank you for your patience. The last doctrinal pillar that captures our mandate as a ministry is the message of lasting peace and fulfillment write it down the message of lasting peace and fulfillment this is where we teach on relationships we teach on prosperity we teach on success we teach on fulfillment because it is important we have been given that mandate by God to help people follow the path of lasting even eternal peace and fulfillment three scriptures and then we pray Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 12 says scripture that has remained in my heart and further by this my son be admonished of making many books there is no end it says and much study is a weariness to the flesh you may even want to add 13 it says let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. Hallelujah. In Mark chapter 8 and verse 36. Mark 8, 36. Mark chapter 8. It says, For what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? So listen, our pursuit as we help people is so that they can live meaningful lives i've taught you that success is not a gift that you give yourself make reference to two of my teachings number one the law of seasons and number two what cs thou two teachings that deal with the subject of destiny and fulfillment very very important what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul your peace and your eternal destiny is very important most people do not understand that there is only one gift you can give yourself from a human standpoint that is fulfillment success is not a gift you give yourself unfortunately success by its definition even comes by being a solution providing a solution to others the only gift you can give yourself is the gift of fulfillment we teach in our school of ministry personal transformation class let me borrow their lecture for one minute and teach you what we call fulfillment. I define fulfillment as the satisfaction that is derived from knowing that you have lived your life effectively, serving the purposes of the kingdom and being a blessing to humanity. I take it again. That fulfillment is the satisfaction that is derived from knowing that you have lived your life, you have spent your days effectively serving the purposes of the kingdom 
and being a blessing to humanity according to Genesis 12 and verse 3 and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed God wants us to live fulfilled lives second Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7 I believe I'm right on that scripture 4 7 please give it to us I have fought a good fight I have finished my cause I have kept the faith I taught you in a teaching this year or was it last year that life and destiny is warfare you must know how to fight life is a race you must know how to run life is a trust you must know how to keep it please hear me for as long as you are part of this vision among the many the buffet of teachings lined up for you year in year out that includes this prophetic year of open doors are teachings that touch across these lives that's why sometimes you see me come on Sunday and I'm teaching you on matters of prayer and faith then giving you wisdom about life and destiny like the law of seasons then coming from another dimension and helping you understand faith understand relationships all of these messages are to honor these foundational pillars let me recap one last time then we are ready to pray. Number one, the first doctrinal pillar that makes up this vision is the message of salvation. The highest in order of priority, revealing Jesus as we say. Number two, the message of transformation. This is where the teaching ministry comes, the ministry of the word of God and its power and ability to transform and to build. Number three, the message of empowerment. Impartation is a major is a major mandate and call in this ministry to transfer the various levels of graces that make for the holistic equipping of the saints number four the message of the supernatural signs wonders deliverances breakthroughs by the spirit of god number five the message of purpose helping the body of christ and helping our global family to understand the dynamics and the principles that make for kingdom advance and then societal transformation i told you here that i have a covenant with god that i will never raise a people who are just spiritual alone there must be people who are useful to the kingdom and useful to society number six the message of love and unity we are nation builders we are builders of the body of Christ that is why we must continue to make our advocacy in love to help galvanize the gray areas littered across the body of Christ that God will help us that someday as preachers as members we will attain a state in the spirit that the Bible calls the unity of faith not uniformity but the unity of faith that regardless our denominational barriers a day will come we can hold hands and thank Jesus and shelve away our differences and focus on our similarities It's the same heaven that all of us are going to and then lastly number seven the message of lasting peace and fulfillment my highest definition of success as I have taught you is peace above and beyond progress progress is useless until peace is added to it Jesus calls himself the Prince of Peace not progress peace is very important he said peace I give you my peace I live with you not as the world gives he said in this world you will have many tribulations but be of good cheer he says I have overcome the world the Lord is speaking to our hearts tonight as we celebrate this mighty move of the spirit that has become a global movement an apostolic and a prophetic manifestation of the hand of God I was almost in tears throughout yesterday as I spent time just praying and thanking the Lord for his goodness and all I could say to him was Lord I thank you grant me the grace to continue to serve you grant me the grace to make that commitment God has helped us and tonight I'm about to speak over your life all those who are, are you know following and then as a global ministry but I really really want to thank God for what he has done it is amazing I cannot begin to say thank you to him my best Lord is everything I have 
my best Lord I give all I have to you you made me great you made me special you made me great I give all I have to you you made me great you made me special you made me great I give all I have to you sing it one more time you made me great you made me special yeah. you made me great I give all I have to you my best Lord is everything I have my best Lord I give all I have to you my best Lord is everything I have my best Lord I give all I have to you if Christ tarries at the end of my life the greatest testimony that I desire is not that this man was powerful the greatest testimony that I desire truly is not that this man went around the world preaching that is wonderful the greatest testimony that I desire two of them number one I have taught it in the teaching the testimony of Enoch the Bible says and Enoch walked with God and he was not the second is that my life became a fulfillment of Genesis 12 and verse 3 that in thee all the families of the earth have been blessed you see we do not fear death we do not fear any of these things but whether he comes or we go to meet him the truth is that we are mandated by God to be busy doing the things that we have to do for someone you came to church tonight and God is speaking to you your life has not blessed anybody and you do not care you've never been part of even the koinonia is not like you are really connected in truth you are just there and not genuinely connected could it be that God is speaking to you tonight it pays to live a life of vision and purpose you must live a life that stands for something the hymn writer says I'll do as it beats me whatever the cost I'll be a true soldier I'll die then the other one says till he returns or calls me home here in the love of Christ the day we stand before him what I desire to hear is well done thou good and faithful servant I gave you five talents you've been able to break make five more not one more not two more I gave you two talents you were able to make two more listen when Jesus comes he's not going to ask you how many degrees you have that is profitable for your earth work he's not going to ask you how many children you gave birth to it is only that which revealed him and brought him glory in the maze of mundane activities that fill our world today from social media addictions to all kinds of things let me honor this day for this ministry by reminding you again that a day will come you will stand before Jesus and you will give account of the gift of life the gift of leadership the gift of power the gift of wisdom he will tell you I gave one billion what did you do with it you say I spent it and kept some in my account because of fear and he says you are a wicked and unprofitable servant I gave you the anointing to heal the sick you healed only 10 people what happened I was lazy and sleeping around and enjoying honorarium you are a wicked and unprofitable servant I gave you access to revelation what did you do you did not mentor my people you did not exhaust the grace given to you and he said, well, I was angry. The people don't like me. Wicked and unprofitable servant. Do I sing that song? When it's all been said and done. 
There is just one thing that matters Did I do my best to live for truth? Did I live my life for you? When it's all been said and done Listen All my treasures will mean nothing Only what I've done for love's reward will stand the test of time Lord your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find precious jewel in married clay turning sinners into saints and I will always sing your praise here on earth and ever after for you've shown me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done you're my life when life while everybody is sitting let me make an altar call right now. This is the right place. You heard the first mandate. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There is no need cajoling you. We are celebrating 12 years of koinonia. It's not 12 years of the ministry. The ministry is older than 12 years. But 12 years of this prophetic platform that has blessed the world. And you are here whilst you heard me speak give us a chance to leave out that mandate right now you came to church perhaps invited by a loved one or you came as a result of a deep conviction you are in the season, a season with the holy ghost and he's really working upon you wherever you are right now i want to make an altar call we've stretched our time a bit tonight i need to speak over god's people wherever you are I want to give you a chance to truly make it right with Jesus. It is true that no Jesus, no life. I don't care whether you have a church name, you are a worker in church. Mm -mm. This is about your relationship with Jesus. Two calls in one. You are yet to genuinely make Jesus Lord of your life. And number two, you feel a need as the Holy Ghost has stirred up your heart to rededicate your heart to Jesus genuinely. That you will spend the remaining part of your days in purpose in wisdom and in all godliness whether you are here or any of the overflows down to the basement outside and the so many who are following online jesus is calling you i'll make the call one to five very quickly wherever you are seated very boldly like jesus himself is calling you i want you to leave your seat don't look at anybody just assume that it is you and Jesus summon that courage and come we love you this is home for you come 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 Koinoni are you celebrating them come Don't sit back if the Holy Ghost is asking you to come. This is an opportunity he gives you. Apostle, you don't know how I've lived my life. Can he accept me back? Come. Jesus is able to give you a new beginning, I assure you. Young, old, rich, poor, Nigerian, European, American, Canadian, Chinese, come to Jesus. The same Lord is rich, over all who call upon him i want to live a life that's true i want to serve you lord for you, for you deserve all this and more you that song just came to my heart ladies and gentlemen i thank you for the courage to have come if you're joining them join please
and if you are following online i'd like you to be ready right now as i pray with them open up your heart to jesus give him a chance you've given your heart to things of lesser value you took greater risks with men and things why don't you give jesus your heart if you could trust money if you could trust men with their vacillations and imperfections does it really cost to trust Jesus? Come. Thank you. I'm going to lead you to pray. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you sincerely from my heart. I love you with all my heart. And I salute you for the courage to come to Jesus. It always goes well with Jesus. It says, say unto the righteous, it shall be well with them. I want to lead you to make this decision. It's a clarion call. And as I lead you to make that decision, let it be from the depth of your heart. Nothing to be ashamed of at all. You are coming to Jesus, the captain of your soul. May I please request that you lift your right hand, make it high above your head as a sign of surrender. And please repeat this after me. Do it with all your heart, knowing that Jesus is right here. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I declare that I love you. I declare that I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again for my justification right now. I receive your mercy. I receive your forgiveness. I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, as my Lord, and as my King. I declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever i declare that i'm saved i am a child of god amen please keep your hands lifted father thank you thank you because they have made this decision and i believe it is true into my heart into my heart come into my heart lord jesus come in today come in to stay come into my heart lord jesus by the power of faith and the integrity of God's word I declare that your sins are forgiven and in the name of Jesus I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God I declare upon you that the power of sin the power of Satan hell and the grave is broken over your life in the name of Jesus I declare that the righteousness that comes by faith is imparted upon your spirit receive peace with God and receive newness of life from tonight until forever, I decree and declare that you go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' matchless name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Please, I'd like you to move to my right very quickly, everyone in front here. Let's celebrate them. To my right, there'll be a group of counselors who will have a quick word with you. Just a quick word. Please do cooperate with them. Just a quick word and you'll be back to your seat. It will not take a long time. Let's celebrate them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, thank you for your patience. You've been stretched at tonight's service. Please stand. Let me just speak over your life. And then we're done. We may not have the time to pray for the Saturday election. But in the name of Jesus, we declare that God has gone ahead of this nation. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now let me declare over your life just in a minute or two and then we're done for this service. Thank you so very much for your patience. Thank you for all that you have done. Thank you for your love and labor for the gospel. Thank you for your love for me, your passion for me. I am I'm indebted to you for life and I'm deeply grateful for all that you have done and all that you keep doing. Our global family, the workers, the leaders in this ministry, thank you for helping me serve Jesus and will continue to do so much as he provides grace in the name of Jesus. Father, I speak over your people in the name that is above all names. Everything that makes for mourning 
everything that makes for mockery everything that makes for reproach I declare that it is rolled over your life now God who has helped us to come thus far and has given us the grace for global impact nothing remains small in your life I declare rise in influence I declare the anointing and the mantle and the mandate that is needed for the next season of your life may it come upon you in Jesus name I place a mark upon you that everywhere you go from tonight be distinguished for favor be distinguished for honor hear me every gift and every mandate that God has placed upon your life that has not yet found expression I am powered by the Spirit to begin to find expression and for many of you here prophetically I open the doors and the gates of nations I open the doors and the gates of supernatural resources I open the doors and the gates of helpers in the name of Jesus Christ may the Lord bless you and may the Lord increase you in Jesus name we're going to share the grace afterwards please do hug someone by your left and right and tell them happy 12th anniversary after the grace let's share the grace in fellowship the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore amen surely all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever Amen. God bless you. Happy 12th anniversary. See you next week. <laughs>